Come on, let's stand to our feet tonight. Let's put our hands together. Come on, we're going to sing a couple songs. Won't you help us sing it out tonight? Wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of all. My sin was heavy, my chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, and now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer.
How many people are excited to be at Fields of Faith 2024? Amen. Hey, we're so excited that you're here. This may be the, the most people we've ever had uh, at, a, at a Fields of Faith that I know of. And one, we're, we're honored and we're so pumped that you're here. But no matter what you came for, come on, won't you tune in for just a moment? No talking for just a moment. Won't you look at me? No matter what you came for tonight, how many people know that we're here to lift high the name that's above every other name? Yeah, you can make some noise for the Lord. Amen. So as we continue, we're going to sing another song. And, and we tried to kind of go back a little bit so maybe everybody would, would know the song. Because more than anything, we want everyone here to worship. We want to worship for right here in this moment, but we want to worship and stand in the gap for our youth groups all across the city, for our schools all across the city. And I want God, when he looks down in this moment in Pleasant Grove, I want him to smile because of what's happening here tonight, because it's a group of young people here wanting to worship the Lord. How many people will give your all and worship the Lord tonight? Won't you make some noise for the Lord? Amen. Before we go into this song, let's just say a quick prayer. And I just want you to zone in for just a moment. Won't you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We surrender this night to you and we say that we need you. Won't you say that? Lord, I need you. God, you're just as real here in this field as you are inside of a church. Lord, in our quiet time at home. And Lord, we ask that right now, Lord, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. God, we're desperate for you tonight. So, Lord, we thank you, we need you, we love you, and we invite you to have your way. Won't you say that, Lord? We invite you to have your way tonight. Lord, we love you, and we say all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. If you know the words to this song, just help us sing it out. You give light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. And you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. Come on, here's your part. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, only to you. Oh. Come on, we'll sing that together. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Oh, great are you. Come on, every voice. Part and says, 
is all the earth. Won't you help us sing it out? All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will on, sing. Here's your part. Great the neighborhoods around us here. Let's sing it. And all the earth will shout time just the voices it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in my lungs so I pour out my praise to you all Jesus only to you I mean we're here for you tonight Lord, we bless your name. God, we thank you for the air in our lungs. Lord, we thank you for the beat in our heart. And Lord, we just ask that tonight, God, that you would be pleased with our worship. Lord, challenge us. Help us be close to you. Lord, we just thank you so much for being good to us. So Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we say all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Won't you have a seat? What's up, Fields of Faith? How we doing tonight? All right, all right. We have a tradition, and some of you know what it is. So you that are on the field, I need you to kind of get in a squatted position for just a second because we're fixing to let this neighborhood know that we are here, that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. On the count of three, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to count out three, two, one. You're going to get on your feet, and you're going to make the loudest cheer that you have ever made in your life like Super Bowl, like some of you are Texas fans, you think they're going to win the national championship, choke. Okay, so yeah, all you guys that are doing this, Mark of the Beast, whatever, here we go. Are you ready? We're going to make it loud and proud. Are you ready? Three, on your feet, two, one. Come on, lift it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In case they were wondering, in case they were wondering, we here tonight. We're here. You can be seated. You can be seated. Holy cow, there's another bus coming in. That's amazing. 
Holy cow. This is crazy. Are you excited about Fields of Faith tonight? Well, I just got to say real quick, we do, everybody lock in. Here's what I need you. I need, I need youth pastors, everybody to help us out. We're going to lock in. So we do six of these a year. We started with just one. It was right here. We said, hey, what would it look like if we did one in Atlanta to help relieve the crowd a little bit? Then it filled back up, and now it's even bigger than it's ever been. Go to Atlanta, Texas. We, got, we take 300 kids, and now we got 1,200 at it. We did one at Paris last week. We got 1,200 at it. But tonight is a record crowd for this Fields of Faith. But all six of those, all six of those Fields of Faith, or five of the six, excuse me, our, my friend, our Fields of Faith worship leader, Zach yelled out on the team. Did they not do a great job tonight? Come on, let's give it up for them. We've tried to come up with a name, but we just, we just finally just said the Fields of Faith Band. I don't know what to call it. So I, I, I just love it because they get it. And uh, how about the letters tonight? What about that? That's amazing. Yeah. So appreciate Let's get lit. That's what his name of his company's in. That's pretty cool. Like, okay, lit's wearing out, buddy. You got to change it. All right. But hey, tonight as we move along, it's gonna get it's gonna get real for some of you. You know, Fields of Faith has started as a night of where we come together as as one body of Christ, as one community. You know, in our community of Texarkana and the surrounding areas, there's man-made lines, if you will. There's lines of a school district. There's a state line. There's racial lines. There's all different lines that man has made, but tonight there's denominational lines. But, there's, but tonight there's no lines in the place. Tonight is about one name, and that name is Jesus Christ. And tonight you're going to hear stories. We just sang about him. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in my lungs. He's the reason we exist today. Whether you believe that or not, truth is truth. But may I tell you tonight is that you're going to hear stories of those that were journeying along and were struggling. There were moments in their life where I would say there were God encounters, God moments. And they resisted those moments and kept going down a road until they finally came to a place they had to make a decision. And tonight for some of you in this place, it's a decision that you're going to have to make. Some of you are going to say yes, and some of you are going to say no, but it's a decision that you have to make. And at the end of tonight, we're going to give you that opportunity. And it's not to be a fad. It's not to be a one-night stand, if you will. It's not this, this thing that we just do for one time. It is a moment where I say, tonight I'm changing things in my life. I'm going to go all in with Jesus. And you're going to hear stories about students that are your age, our guest speaker tonight is going to share tonight as well. I'll introduce him here in just a little bit. But tonight there's going to be live stories and there's going to be videos. And I'm asking you over the next few moments to put phones up. We've had all the time to take pictures. I'm not trying to be rude. I care about your eternity and where you're going to spend it. And I'm asking you to lean in and lock in. I'm not asking you to talk to your neighbor. Because here's the deal, it may not be for you, but it may be for somebody beside you. I know I may be coming across as strong tonight, but I'll just be real honest with you, I really don't care. Because I care about your soul that much. And for some of you, I care more about your soul than you do. And so I'm asking you to lean in. I'm asking you to listen. Because there are going to be students that are your age group that have had the courage to say, hey, I'll raise my hand, I'll go on the stage, and I'll share with by video or live. Tonight, I want us to start off. I want you to turn your attention to the two screens or the big screen. Take a listen to this story. My name is Caleb Brower, and I'm a junior at Maud High School, and this is my story. So I dedicated my life to Christ and got saved uh, when I was real young. Throughout the years, I fell away from it and kind of got more sad and just anxiety-ridden with uh, 
things to come and of my past. I was going to church, but I wasn't in church. I was, you know, just, I was there for checklist. Parents made me go. I wasn't really in it. It got real bad when the solar eclipse was happening. Uh, on that day, I was outside with my friends and they were all talking, you know, how the world's ending, how Jesus is coming back. And I was very scared that I wasn't gonna go with him. And that day passed, but I still felt very anxiety ridden about things like that. So my mom took me to my grandma that has stud studied the book of Revelations pretty deeply and uh, how glorious it will be when we meet him and help me rededicate my life to him. Once I got out with God, I uh, felt good. You know, I had the anxiety lifted from me knowing I was insured with him. I started to read more. I didn't go to church for a checklist. I actually paid attention. I took notes, you know, realized what was happening. Started going to youth group things and staying around more uh, Christian friends and ones that uh, wouldn't lead me down the wrong path. I realized it's more about trying to find Jesus and becoming more like him and uh, less of the world. Don't leave here tonight if you don't have that peace that I was able to find through Jesus. And if you don't know that you know that you know that your eternity is with him. Where's my man at tonight? I'm trying to find him. Where's he at? Where's Caleb at tonight? Come on, stand up, Caleb, real quick. Just real quick. Come on, stand up. Let's give it up for Caleb right over here. Here's the deal. You never know. You never know that moment that it's, it's your, when God's going to touch your heart and you're going to realize, hey, I need to do something about this. You know, tonight we changed a few things up tonight. Instead of having maybe one on the stage, tonight we're going to have a panel. And our, with FCA, we've got several staff. I serve the Northeast Texas, South Arkansas as the director, which that doesn't matter. Titles don't matter. It's impact that matters. And one of our staff guys that specifically serves in Southwest Arkansas is Alan Thompson, and he's going to come and lead that panel for us. Would you give it up for Mr. Alan Thompson? What's going on, everybody? Go ahead, go ahead, go have a seat, coach. It's all right if we get comfortable tonight. I'll take that as a yes. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> hey, like he said, my name is Alan, and uh, I know it fields of faith every year. There's always a big push uh, for students. Uh, we want to share the gospel with you, let you know about Jesus, how much he loves you, how he died for you, how he came back to life for you, and how we can find forgiveness in him. But I know every year there's a lot of students, there's a lot of coaches that are in uh, attendance here, and you may not be lost outside of Christ, but inside of Christ, in Christianity, you may be feeling a, lost, a little lost as far as, what do I do now? I made this decision to follow Christ, I read the word, I know I'm a new creation, but what does that even look like, and, and how does that play out in real life? So I got a couple of friends with me here tonight uh, that can maybe help us out a little bit uh, in that journey. So we may be speaking to them tonight that you know, need a little bit of a uh, X's and O's play-by-play -play on, on how to live out their, uh, their Christianity on campus. So uh, on, the, on your far left over here is Coach Mims. He is from DCAB. I knew that was, I knew that was coming. He is a football, basketball, and track coach. And then next to him in the middle here is uh, Sam Ernest. He is a senior at Derrick's High School. He plays football, and he is also a track star there for the Outlaws. All right. Um, so first off, I'm going to pitch it to Sam. All right, you're up first. You're on the hot seat. I'm just going to ask you a question here. What does it even mean to be a Christian student? So being a Christian student is, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is you gotta be vulnerable. Um, Cause you know, you're never gonna be perfect. Uh, so part of that, like part of that is being vulnerable. You wanna see, like you want people to know that you are a Christian and you're not, like Christians aren't perfect. The only perfect there ever was was Jesus. Uh, so the way I kinda see it is even though you're not perfect, 
it's something you should strive to be. It's the like closer you are to perfect, it's the closer you are to him. So, you know, being vulnerable and showing you're not perfect uh, just kind of builds up how, you know, you might serve as a role model. People might see you and say, okay, he struggles with some things, but he's also able to deal with it by l leaning on his faith. Uh, he, you know, God can work miracles. Uh, everybody knows that. Um, so kind of looking at that is, and seeing, being vulnerable allows people to see how you kind of handle things and it makes them go, okay, you know what, that's something I want to experience. And overall, just lead, being a leader through your school and that'll just play on and play on and play on and it'll build up. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate that, Sam. Good stuff. Coach, I'm going to pitch it to you. All right, same question, but I'm going to word it this way. Uh, what does it mean to be a Christian coach? All right, coaches, I know there's some coaches here that may be a coach who just happens to be a Christian, but what does it specifically mean to be a Christian coach? Okay, uh, that is a, a, a great question. So what does it mean to be a Christian coach? All right, so the first thing that you got to ask yourself, okay, if you are truly a Christian, a Christian come before anything that you do. All right, so the Christian... Being a Christian is the uh, root of it. All right, me coaching is the is the um, a fruit of it. So if I say that I truly uh, believe in Jesus, all right, anything that I do, it is going to uh, bring Him uh, glory. So in my mindset to coaching, everything is about serving. So how can I serve my students, the teachers? All right, and uh, the way that you serve people is by time. You know, I can say that I love you and this and that, but it's all about the time, all right? So if you truly are a Christian coach, all right, truly, truly love the kids that you coach, all right? Serve them. Find ways to try to serve them every single day. And I promise you, if you can uh, do that, you will see a big difference in your uh, life. And because um, I've been on the side of, because I got the chance to play, uh, college ball, football, track, and all that. Uh, we won state uh, three times. And I thought coaching was going to be about winning, winning, winning. And then Jesus was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's about people. It's about truly changing people. So, yeah, you know, have that uh, mindset that I am going to serve every single day. So, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, so, yeah. So now, Sam, speaking of serving and, and things like that, I, what are some things that, from a student's perspective, what are some things that Christian students should be doing on campus? So that basically kind of just turns back around to being a leader, really. Um, you know, maybe even tonight. Maybe tonight you had some people that, uh, you know, you may have really pushed to come with you, and uh, they may not have. Um, but I don't think that ends tonight. You know, you just got to... Keep inviting them. Don't exclude them. Uh, you know, just keep pushing for it. Keep pushing for it. Uh, some people aren't, I'd say, like fortunate enough to kind of grow up around an environment uh, that's Christ-based. You know, uh, so they don't get very many opportunities to learn the word, to improve, um, just whatever they're looking to help themselves with. Um, another thing is with teachers. At a, at a school setting, uh, they're not, they're like legally limited to what they can and can't do. So with that, you know, students, it's kind of our job to step up and lead, and uh, FCA is a perfect way to do that. Uh, just whatever we can to get the word out to anybody and everybody who walks the school halls is, would play just a tremendous factor. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Hey, now just, uh, now, let's go ahead. We'll stay with uh, we'll stay with Sam here. I got w one more question for you. So just give us a real quick, all right, what does that look like on campus? What are some things that y'all do um, at Derrick's through FCA? What are some w things y'all do on campus? Uh, so one of the things we did was uh, we installed a prayer locker. Uh, it's, in, it's in our lobby, uh, which, you know, Derrick's is not a very big school, so I'd imagine a lot of people may have not uh, seen that set up. But our lobby is... Uh, connected to the gym. You know, you got to go through the lobby to get to the gym. Uh, so the prayer locker is right there in the middle of the lobby. And, uh, you know, people come in, you know, if they're dealing with something, they're having a hard day, they can always go in the lobby. Uh, you know, if they just need to get something off their chest, 
you go put it in the prayer locker. We'll pray over it. Uh, you know, basketball games, we've had some other schools come in, and we make sure to pray over them as well. Uh, then we do some huddle meetings. Uh, we try to do, you know, at least twice a, meet at least twice a month. Uh, and another thing we're going to start incorporating this year is we're going to have our upperclassmen uh, get involved with some of the huddle groups with junior high or kind of the younger classmen uh, kind of just set up, you know, for after, you know, we graduate. Uh, that way it just kind of trickles on down and keeps the FCA chapter going and just moving on. Yeah, kind of like a discipleship thing, having the older classmen leading exactly. the under. That's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, coach, I got a question for you now. So it's from the, we've already heard your f philosophy of coaching here. Now let's put it into practice. What do you do as a coach to lead on campus? Ooh, so before that, I think before I even get to work, it's the process. You know, y'all, you know, you can desire to be good. You can desire to uh, live for Jesus, but it's all about that discipline. You know what I mean? I can desire to be good all the time, but if you don't have that discipline, it, it really uh, don't matter. So I tell myself every day, it's time to read. It's, it's, you know, a time to pray and all that. And when you do that, and I promise you, you will just start to change more and more. So, you know what I mean? That discipline is everything. And for, you know, at the school, just seeing it, because um, every kid desire to have someone to uh, follow, you know, and just at the campus that uh, we are on, I'm seeing a big change, you know, just because they are seeing the leaders, the uh, coaches, and the teachers truly living, living uh, for Jesus. And, uh, man, it's just been a, a great sight to see. Yeah. So main thing is about that discipline, 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 discipline. Gotcha. Hey, just about a minute left, guys. Tell us real quick, there's a cool story that you have, right, about a, a young man named Mark. You mind yeah. sharing that with us? And yeah, um, it's a guy named Mark Rogers, and I actually think he is here somewhere tonight. So, um, uh, Mark here, what's up, Mark? So anyway, uh, this kid moved to uh, Decal, Texas this summer, all right, and um, I had met him once, and he came up to me and was like, hey, I need to talk to you. I do not, I do not... I believe in God, and um, the teammates were telling me to uh, talk to you. So anyway, we just talked about stuff and all that, and um, he did not have a Bible at the time or whatever. And I told him, I said, "Man, I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, start off in Genesis and all that." So anyway, uh, we was at practice maybe two months afterwards, and Mark, and Mark uh, comes up to me. And was like, Coach Mims, I really want to go to a church with you on Sunday. And I was like, okay, awesome. So Sundays come. All right, no, let me fast forward to Saturday night. So Saturday night, all right, Coach Moats texts me and was like, hey, I got this bag and I got this Bible. And, um, and I don't know, I just feel like the Lord is telling me to give this to you. And I was like, okay, perfect. Then that very next day, I picked up Mark. Uh, we went to church. And, um, and I was praying all night. I'm like, Lord, please save him. Please save him. Please save him. And that day, nothing really uh, happened. And um, this is when church had ended. And I was finna uh, take him home, but I felt the Lord telling me that we need to go somewhere to eat. So we went, sat down, ate. We just talked. And then I was, then I was taking him home, and I was like, hey, do you have a, a Bible? And he was like, no, coach, I don't. And, you know, this not a, a coincidence. You know, at that very moment, I looked back, and I was like, well, I just got this Bible from uh, Coach Moats, and I think this is supposed to go to Mark. So anyway, I gave it to Mark, and um, shortly, about a month after, all right, Mark ended up get, getting saved. All right, he, he had accepted Jesus, and he just got baptized this past Sunday. So, uh, you know, just seeing that, really uh, touched my heart and it made me think about the sovereignty of God, you know, because this is my seventh year uh, coaching there and um, the Lord know, like, uh, the Lord knew I would meet him before he even uh, placed a uh, mark there, and, you know, and it's just powerful when you just think about the small things uh, like that, so yeah. That's good, man. Hey, thank you guys. Hey, every one of you are here for a reason and you're at your place, you're at your school. 
you're a student where you're at, you're a coach where you're at, whether it's for a short time or a long time, and there's a reason for it, uh, reach out to God. Seek his will in all things that you do. You never know how God might use you to change somebody's eternity. Hey, thank you, guys. Eric? Yep. Hi, my name is Lily Hensley. I'm a senior at Genoa Central. This is my testimony. When I was in middle school a few years ago, I had a lot of insecurities and I was very unsure of myself and had a lot of anxiety. And that kind of turned into a depression that just kind of got deeper. Um, and I dealt with that in a lot of bad, bad ways. One of which um, was cutting myself and um, suicidal thoughts and then which led into um, homosexuality, wanting to change my identity so that I could be accepted because I wanted to be wanted by people. So I identified as non-binary and bisexual for a few years and it never gave me the peace or the happiness that I was searching for. Um, and I was raised in a Christian household, but I never wanted really anything to do with God. And I was very anti-Christianity for a long time until I was, I went to a Christian private school here in Texarkana called Lighthouse Christian Academy. And the people there were some of the most wonderful and loving people I've ever met. And they showed me how loving and forgiving God and Christians really could be and it really opened my heart up to the possibility of it. Not long after that, my step nana Tony happened, and so we move forward because we're prepared for that. So let's keep moving forward tonight out of Falk, Arkansas. Anybody from Falk here tonight? She's a senior. She plays basketball and softball. Would you please welcome Lainey Richardson? Hey guys, like Mr. Eric said, my name is Lainey Richardson and if you can see on the board, I have a name tag and it says child of God and I want to let everybody know in this stadium that you too are a child of God. And today I want to talk about what it means to live up to this name tag and this can be through our actions, our words, and our mindset. And my first point is actions. Our actions as Christians are very important. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before others so that they see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven. It does not matter where we are or who are you with or what people we are around. You have to glorify God in your actions and everything you do. We can't live for Jesus on a Sunday with our name tag on and rip it off for the Monday when we go back to school. It can't work like that. Christianity is not an on and off switch that you can just flick on whenever you feel like it and flick off whenever you don't feel like it. You have to live for God every day if you're going to live for it one day. You, you don't know who you're confusing or you're confusing yourself when you're being four different people at a time. My second point are our words. Our words are extremely powerful. In Ephesians 4.29 it says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an, enc an encouragement to those who hear them. And I want to ask everybody in the crowd tonight, do your words reflect Christ? A lot of these words that we speak every day probably don't. We gossip, we cuss, we fight, we slander, we judge, all with our words. We have to be people who lift each other up and know what is good and know what is wrong. Your voice is heard by so many. Don't let things of evil pour out of your mouth. My third point is mindset. Our words and our actions begin with our mindset. If you have your mindset right, you have everything right. Every day when you wake up, you have to look at the cross and not live for this world. This generation wakes up every day, probably grabs their phone, probably. I do it. I'm, I'm a victim of that. I grab my phone. I scroll. No. We have to look at the cross, look at the Bible, get into the word. We chase this world every day. We look for fame. We look for the best of everything, the best on the team, the best car. If we live for this world, anything worth having is Jesus. If we don't have Jesus, we have nothing worth living for. And to live up to this name tag, it's not always going to be perfect. You're not going to be a perfect Christian. 
I'm not a perfect Christian. I sin, I struggle, I fall, but I get back up again, and I look at my name tag and know that I'm a child of God. I encourage you today, tomorrow, and forever to live as a child of God and to put on your name tag and never take it off. Thank you. Come on, let's give it up for Lainey tonight. Was that not amazing? Tonight, we were supposed to have some other videos to just be real honest with you, but we're going to move forward because that's just how we roll. Everybody good? Awesome, awesome. There's a reason. God knows. But tonight is our keynote speaker. He is from DCAP, Texas. Any DK in the house tonight? Wow, half the town's here, Jason. He's originally from DCAP, Texas. Ended up playing football there. Went to Washita Baptist University. Interviewed with... 16 NFL teams now is uh, considered a social influencer between TikTok, TikTok and Instagram. He has over a million followers. Uh, just Monday a week ago, or excuse me, Sunday a week ago, he posted a video. Now has over 4 million views. And uh, the coolest part about this tonight is in 2013, we started Fields of Faith right here at Pleasant Grove. Jason was sitting right up there as a 12-year-old, walked down an aisle and gave his heart to Christ right here at Fields of Faith. Would you welcome Jason Jackson, Jr.? What's up, y'all? Man, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor to be able to come back and speak in East Texas. God has blessed me to do some amazing things um, in just a short amount of time, but it, it always means the most to be able to come back and see familiar faces. And it really means a lot to come back to the place where I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Um, as he mentioned, it was right here on this field. I remember where I was sitting at. It was a group of us, uh, my brother included, who's also here today. And, you know, we came down as, a, as, a, as just a friend group. One of us was kind of nervous, or I was kind of nervous, and one of us decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. And everybody else followed suit. I was 12 years old when that happened, but one thing about that moment that I kind of reflected on just over the past year in my life was that's the night that I actually accepted the Lord as my Savior, but I didn't make him the Lord over my life. And I feel like that's probably where a lot of us are today. As I kind of got deeper into my faith, I was going through some stuff last year, and I really didn't, I didn't have the answers. I realized that I was really just a big religious person, and I wasn't a big believer in Christ. The only thing that I knew how to follow was religion. So when I was going through something, I was faced with some adversity and some opposition, something that I had never dealt with before. I finally got to the point where I tried to apply all the religious things that I had learned back home, and none of it worked. So I went through a complete metamorphosis of my personality and who I was and my faith, and I had to really be tried by fire. We sing it all the time, but it's another thing to actually be tried by. So I went through this season in my life where I was like, I want to learn as much as I can about God. I want to learn about what God created and not just, I want to learn more about the God, God the creator and not just what God created. So as I'm reading the Bible, I realized something about myself, and I bet many of you, if not all of you, do it the same way that I did. When I'm reading the Bible and when I was doing these things, I'm trying to do these Bible studies, I couldn't grasp it. The book, I just couldn't get my mind to, to understand what was being said in the text. And it's because I was reading from the perspective of the Savior and not the sinner. See, most of the time, whenever we're reading the Bible and we're doing these Bible studies and things, we always want to put ourselves in a place of Jesus. We want to put ourselves in a place of God. But you will never get the message if you don't read from the perspective of the sinner. Because it's not Jesus that is talking for you. It's Jesus that's talking to you. And a lot of times we feel like we've done no wrong. I messed up whenever I thought that the, that the Bible was a book about religion. I probably just ruffled a lot of feathers with that, but the Bible is not a book about religion. I know that's right. <laughs> but the Bible is a, is a book about a kingdom. Jesus is not a religious figure. Jesus was a human on earth, and he's a governmental figure. So as I'm going through the Bible, I'm reading, I'm kind of reflecting on myself, like where am I at in the text? I get to the part that most people know about. I get to the story of Judas. Everybody know the story of Judas. He was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and he betrayed Jesus. He did all these things for 30 pieces of silver. And I'm like, how could he do that to a Jesus that he claimed he loved? Like, this is supposed to be a man that he claimed he loved. He walked with him every day. Jesus handpicked him. I want you to be on my team. 
I'm like, how could he betray somebody like that for 30 pieces of silver? In that very moment, God spoke to me. I don't, I'm not one of those people that tell you God told me to tell you this or the Lord is telling me. I'm not one of those people, but when I know it, I know it. In that very moment, God spoke to me and said, I want you to realize that you Judas. I'm like, what? I ain't no way. I love the Lord. That can't be me. He said, the only difference between you and Judas is Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. You do it for free every day. So what I want y'all to reflect on is where are you in the Bible? We can sit up all day long. We can quote, we can quote scripture. We can quote John 3.16. But have you, re have you read Revelation 3.16? Have you read Revelation 3.15? For God so loved the world. And I'm not saying that God don't love the world. But if that's the only thing that you know about the Lord, then I'm not, I'm not saying that that's incorrect, but I am saying that's incomplete. Some of y'all are in a season, in a situation in y'all life right now. And I, I'm, I haven't talked to a single person out here. But some of y'all are in a situation right now and you asking, like, God, why me? Like, why I got to be the one to go through this? Why you got to put this on my life? People that ain't even worshiping you, they living better than me. Why you got to put me through this? It's easy to have that perspective. It's easy to look at life that way. But one thing about life and one thing about being a true believer, whenever you truly believe in something, it's action that always follows it. Whenever you truly have a relationship with God, I'm not talking about I go to church on Sunday, I get out and I talk about everybody that I saw. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that you really, walk, that you really ride for. Something that every, no matter what you face with, you're going to stand on all ten, regardless of the outcome. That's the relationship that I'm talking about. So when people ask me, why do you go so hard for God? Why is this the only thing that you talk about? I've had companies try to tell me, you know, if you, I've had an offer for $2.7 million. I come from DeKalb, Texas. I come from a family that we ain't got too much of nothing. $2.7 million for me to change up what I'm doing and follow their way. I said, it's not about entertainment with me. This ain't about entertainment. I never did this for entertainment. I did this for impact. Because I represent something that's a lot bigger than me. And when I was in my, when I was in my apartment with eviction notices on the door, y'all, this is just last year. I'm in my apartment with eviction notices on the door. I ain't got nobody to call. The only person that was by my side was the Lord. So ain't no way I'm finna turn my back on him. Because I've seen what he can do for me. And I'm not going around the world. I'm not going on the internet. And I'm not telling people about the Lord because I just want to I want to pump myself up and I can get followers. I can get clicks. I can get likes and all that stuff. You can take all that away. But one thing you can't take from me is my faith. Why? Because in the midst of adversity and everything going on, my faith was the only thing that I had. That's why this means so much to me. And I don't just do anything with anybody. If you're in a situation, if you're in a season right now and you're wondering, God, how can I get through this? Why would you put me through this? It's because nothing is about you. Nothing in this life is about you. It's for somebody else. I know you had to lose your parents. I know they, didn't, they shouldn't have done that to you whenever you were young. I know what's going on. I understand. But it's not about you. And if you only look at it from your perspective, you will never get the message. The message is God is saying, I trust you with this. You know you're growing as a believer. You know you're growing as a person in faith whenever you can get to the point where you don't just trust God, but God trusts you. So when he puts you through some adversity and he puts you through something that you've never been through before, it's not about you. And God is saying, I got somebody that's coming your way. And by the way that you handle this, you're the biggest influence on their life. So by the way that they see you handle it, that's the way that they're going to do the same thing. And I need you to share that story because if you don't, they're going to take their life. That's why it's important to share what's going on in your life. It ain't, I'm not here to be the cool kid. I'm not here to be the social media influencer. I'm just here to share the word. I'm here to share everything that I done been through with y'all. Why? Because that's how you build community. That's how it's done. I can sit up here and tell y'all. I can name y'all. I can tell y'all all the people I've got to meet. But every single person that I've ever met, from the most famous people in the world all the way down to the bottom, they come to me only for one reason. And that's because, man, you said something in that video that I felt like I could just come and talk to you about. But most of us want to hold off. Most of us want to hold back because it doesn't fit our aesthetic. That don't fit who I am as a person. So I'm going to hide my faith in a closet and, you know, I'm going to just let people do what they do. That's like saying if you're cheating on your wife, if you're cheating on the person that you're married to, I'm not going to tell them because that's none of my business. As a person, as a person with character, 
If you see your brother and sister falling, you're supposed to tell them, hey, man, that ain't right. You know you're supposed to be doing better than that, dog. But we've, we've made it so comfortable, we've created a community that's content with complacency. We've created a community, and myself was included, we've created a community that's so content with Jesus just being our Savior and not being the Lord of our lives, not being a person that's going to lead us into all righteousness. See, people, listen guys, whenever, whenever you go to church, and I'm not bashing church, I love church, but when you go to church and the only thing that you hear is about Jesus dying, you, then you have a church that's idolizing the death of Jesus. Yes, Jesus did die for our sins, but Jesus also lived to be our example. So with the way that you live your life, this is a personal question. I only know one way to share the gospel, and that's real. This is a personal question. As a believer, as somebody that say they believe in the Lord, what does your life say about him? What have you been showing other Christians and other people all across the world it's okay to do as a Christian? Yeah, I'm a believer, but what's your but? What's your excuse? What's the reason why you can go and do that, but this person over here can't? Because whenever you, look, whenever you live your life that way, you got a believer out here that's, or a non-believer that's saying, man, why would I want to do what you're doing? I'm doing the same exact thing as you. You just got a label on it. What label do you have? I, wanna, I want y'all to reflect on the story of Judas. Because a lot of us are like, I don't feel like I betray Jesus. How do I betray him for free? Man, it's, sometimes it's that 3-5 that you go by to smoke with the boys whenever some on your mind. You will betray your salvation with Jesus for, a three, five, for some weed, just so you can clear your mind, and then it's just going to come back later. It's the bottle that you go by whenever everything is going crazy in your life and you don't know what to do. That's what you will betray your relationship with Jesus for. And I'm not saying that anybody in this stadium, I'm not saying that a single person in this stadium can be sinless. But I am saying that every single person in this stadium can sin less. So one thing that I want to leave y'all with today, because I ain't got much time. None of us do. But I want to ask you this question. What are you leading with? Are you leading with status? Are you leading with who you are and the things that, that the world has given you? Are you leading with that? Or whenever you introduce yourself to somebody, do you tell them, hey man, I'm sorry, I understand that you got that going on, but please, you know, I don't, I don't condone that activity. Just, just do it over there. What do your actions say about you? Anybody can say it. Anybody can share the word. Anybody can do that stuff. But do you really mean it? Do you really live by it? I mentioned Revelation 3.15 and 16. Jesus said, you are, neither, you are not hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. You make me sick to my stomach. I will spit you out. What does that mean? A lot of people quote scripture, but they don't understand what it means. When Jesus is saying that, he's saying, it's just like you eating something that's hot and cold at the same time. It creates a chemical reaction in your stomach that makes your stomach upset. Jesus is saying, that upsets me. Either be all the way in or be all the way out because the way that you live your life is preaching a message about me. So you choose what you're going to do. I'm not sitting up here to try to convince you that Jesus is king. I'm not trying to convince you of any of that. I believe what I believe, and I'm going to share it regardless of what you believe. But as a believer, it's my right to share with you that God going to be God whether you believe in him or not. God going to show up for you and provide for you whether you believe he's doing it or not. That's the revelation that I had to come to. So the last thing I want to say is start with God and stick with God because in the end, you're going to run into God. One more thing. The worst thing that you could do is run into God at the end and God tell you that he don't know you. So my recommendation is find out who he is before you get to the end. Thank you all. I need everybody to stay still for the next few moments. I want every person here to think of a heart. To think about a heart. That heart represents a lot of things. But for God, it represents love. Genesis 126 tells us that in the beginning he created man and woman 
and the reason he created them was to love them. Some of us think of love, and when we talk about love, we think of it as a conditional thing. Things like Valentine's Day. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The heart of candy that you got from your ex-boyfriend that's now ex-boyfriend that you got last Valentine's Day. It's conditional. But then there's this love that God has. It's an unconditional love. There is nothing in the world you can do to to force God to stop loving you. What you think of a heart? Because it represents love. But the problem is, is that in the beginning also, where John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. He loves us. But the problem is, is that for us, sin divides us. I want you to think about it. I know some of you hate math in this place. Math is not one of those things that, that you're really good at. But we've got to get real tonight. I want you to think of a division sign. You put a dot at the top that represents God. You put a dot at the bottom that represents you. And you draw a line which represents our sin. Because sin divides us. Romans 3.23 tells us that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You heard Jason, you've heard the ones that have spoken by video or live. You know every one of us in this place, the thousands of people are here that are here. All of us have sinned. And you move to Romans 6.23 and it says this, that the wages of sin is death. The payday of sin. If you keep doing this thing and you don't get things right, death is going to come and that death is going to be an eternal place in hell all of us have sinned see in the beginning when when sin entered the world when Adam and Eve were in the garden there was this tree that they weren't supposed to touch that says they weren't supposed to eat from I don't know about you but maybe you're like me when somebody tells you not to touch something what do you do Oh, yeah, you remember the hot stove? Some of you got scars from when you were a kid, like, ah! Sorry, Mom. And now you got a skin graft on your hand. You used to have a thumbprint, now you don't. You've got a thumbprint, it's like blank, blank, little thumb. All right. Because when you're told to not do something, you intentionally do it. That's how sin entered the world. For, for you, maybe it's you're told to know, don't, don't go out with the guys and, and don't go out with the girls and don't go to the party on the weekends and participate in that stuff. But let's just get real in the room. The moment mom and dad pull out of the driveway and they go out of town, you end up at the party. The moment that we can get away to get to the bathroom and it fills the faith, we go in the, in the bathroom and we start to vaping. I'm just being real in the place tonight. You see, because we're told not to do certain things, but yet we'll still do them. It's been since a creation. It's called sin, and we keep going into this place of keeping doing things and rebelling against the thing. Can I just tell you, the payday of sin is death. Yes, that's the bad news. But over 2,000 years later, I want you to think of a cross. Everybody say the cross. Over 2,000 years ago, There's a man named Jesus that left the portals of heaven, came through the womb of a woman named Mary, and was born that we celebrate on Christmas. On Easter, we celebrate his death, his life, his death, and his resurrection. And he died for your sins. He died for my sins. For God so loved the world, here it is, that he gave. Everybody say, he gave. He gave his only son. Jesus was an only child. I get it. I'm in that boat. I'm an only. And my parents are sitting right up here for the last 12 years. They've sat in that spot. I'm an only child. It would be like my dad saying, hey, I give my son so that you can be redeemed. It's exactly what God did. He sent his son to live, to die, and to be resurrected, not just for our sins, but for you. So you, the payday then is when you accept Jesus. The payday is no longer death, but it is life. It is eternal life, and you will spend it in heaven with him. But here's the thing.
But here's the thing. He did all of that. And it's amazing to talk about. It's amazing for these guys to sing about. It's amazing for you to hear testimonies about. It's amazing for Jason to stand here and talk about standing up there and walking down here and making that decision. But there comes a point where you got to stop talking and you just got to start doing. Because in the end, Jesus is not going to say that, well said, come on in. He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. There's action that we have to take. And that action tonight is for you to make that decision to follow Jesus. To say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to be in you and I want you to be in me. I'm going to ask you to come into my life. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I want to spend eternity with you. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life see there comes a point where you have to make that decision your parents can't make it for you every person in this room every person in this room in this stadium every person here you're at the age of accountability for some of you you can no longer live on your parents faith it's your faith it's your time to take a step I don't care if you've been in church all your life, if you've never attended church. I don't care if you have a title and you're the captain of this or you're the president of that or you're this cheerleader or you're this band captain or you play on the drum line, you play trumpet or you're in the one-act play. None of that's going to matter in the end. I don't care if you've got trophies. Guys, I've got championship rings at home. At the end of this thing, none of that is going to matter. There's one thing that's going to matter, a relationship with Jesus Christ so tonight I'm asking you tonight I'm asking you what are you going to do with Jesus it's the question mark I want every person in this place to put your hand over your heart would you put your hand over your heart And it's not a fear tactic, it's a reality check. Most of you in this place, like me, if you're wound up tight like I am, your heart's pounding, it's beating, you can feel it on the other side of your hand. Some of you are trying to find your heart, I can tell. But let's get real. If that heart starts beating right now, I'm not saying when you drive out of here and have a car wreck, all those things. I'm talking like your heart stopped beating right now. Where would you spend eternity? Because if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's not in heaven. But tonight, I want to give you that opportunity to come to know Jesus. He's the reason we do this, He's the reason. And I know that tonight has been very serious at moments. It's been very direct. But guys, if you watch the news very much, which I don't like to watch the news, but in the reality, this thing's coming to an end a lot quicker than we realize. And eternity matters. Are you ready to meet your Savior? Are you ready? Is your life right with Him? Is He Lord and Savior of your life? with every head bowed and every eye closed in this place. I'm going to ask you a simple question. If you're here tonight, and I'm not asking you to pray the prayer 50 times, whatever. If you're here tonight and you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, you've never said, Jesus, I want to make you Lord of my life. I'm ready tonight. You're here tonight and you've never done that. I'm not asking if you've gone to church. I'm not asking how many times you've been to your FCA. I'm not asking how many times you've been to a chapel for your, for your, your sports team. I'm asking you, have you asked Jesus to come in to your life and be the Lord and Savior of your life? It's the question mark. 
tonight you're ready, you say, listen, I want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Tonight, I'm going all in with Jesus. Tonight is my night. I know that this event was created for me for this moment. I want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm going to count down from three, and I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up and put it right back down. Youth pastors, help me locate. Youth pastors, pay attention to your students. You're here tonight, and you're ready to make that decision. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of being back and forth. I'm going all in tonight. If that's you, I want you to throw your hand up in three, two, one. Lift your hand. There's hands all over. There's hands all over. You can put your hands back down. I want everybody in the place, we're going to pray this prayer. Now listen, as we pray tonight, the prayer does not save you. What you say doesn't save you, but when you mean it in your heart, that's where the change happens. You can just say words and it not mean anything. But when something on the inside, when you say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going all in. I mean this, God. I'm ready. This is my moment. Let's pray. Say, dear Jesus. All right, we got to do better now. Say, dear Jesus. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me right now. Lord, thank you for this night. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I'm going all in. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give it up for those that made that decision. Now I'm going to ask you to take one more. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, a lot of courage. I'm going to ask you to just stand up right where you are. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, there's one. Come on, they're standing up everywhere. Come on, just stand up right where you are. Come on, help them out. Give it up for them. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time. Here's what I want you to do tonight. Stay right where you are. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. We're not going to embarrass you, number one. That's the number one thing I can't stand when people embarrass others like that. You've just made the best decision that you've ever made. Every one of you. Hey, if you're going to cheer for them, let's give it up for them. Come on. Here's what I want you to do. Listen. We've got people down here that have volunteered and said we care. I was at a church Sunday, and they do this thing called the Victory Call. We're calling you to victory. We want to celebrate that. Everybody stay seated. That's not I, This is just for those that are standing. Just for a moment. Don't move. We, we're not playing games here. But don't move. But these people, we're going to do a victory call tonight. And tonight, you made that decision for the very first time. We'll ask everybody to stay still. We want to ask these to come down and find somebody. They just want to pray with you. They want to celebrate with you. So you guys begin to make your way out here. They're going to pray with you, celebrate. Everybody else, come on, let's celebrate them as they begin to make their way. Come on. Come on. Make your way out this way. Come on, guys, help us out. As they're making their way down, everybody else stand up. Come on, stand up on your feet and come on as they begin to lead us in worship. Come on, let's worship tonight. Come on, let's sing this together tonight. It says, Blessed Assured. Blessed Assured. 
Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit and washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Come on, here's your part right here. It says, "I trust." Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never. If you believe that tonight, he will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Come on, we'll sing it with perfect submission. Perfect submission, all is at rest, and I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my stand. Oh, we sing so this is. So this is my story, and this is my. next part it's real simple it says i sought the lord and he heard and he answered so tonight if that's your story i just want you to help us sing it and declare that to the lord but let's continue to worship together as they're down front praying amen let's sing it i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i saw the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him come on that's everybody. why i trust him i saw the lord and he heard and he answered i saw the lord and he heard and he answered I Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I 
he won't ever fail oh i trust in god my savior the one come on every voice who will never fail he will never fail oh, sing on, I, saw. I saw the lord and he heard yes, he and heard. he answered i saw the lord and he heard and he answered i saw the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust come on him. every voice that's every heart sing it out. Come on, every voice going on the earth. Come on. You got it in you. Come on. This is your part. Come on. Come on, let's sing that one more time. Every voice, every heart. Every voice, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. 
We pour out our praise at your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you only. Isn't God good tonight? Come on, isn't God good tonight? Hey, well, here's the deal. How many of you got a neon shirt on tonight? Did you enjoy the neon thing? Well, hey, we've got a little bit of time left. How about we celebrate what God did tonight? How about some little upbeat stuff? We're going to change some lights up a little bit. Are you ready to have just a little party in the house tonight? Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, Zach. Here we go. Come on, here we go. Come on, let's put our hands together.
I needed rescue, my sin was heavy The chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan And now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healer and now your love is the end that I believe in I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name technical issues but by God we know how to finish this thing strong because I watched over a hundred people hell lost over a hundred people tonight come on somebody hello I don't think you heard me I said hell lost a hundred people tonight here's what I want us to do we're going to end it we're all from different places. I want you to touch somebody, put your arm around somebody, touch them on the shoulder, whatever. We're gonna pray together. We'll be dismissed. For all you time people, it's only two minutes over. <laughs> Lord, we love you. We thank you for what you did tonight. Lord, I thank you as we walk back on campuses that, God, we would be different. That, God, when we walk on campus tomorrow, they're going to know that we encountered you to last night. Lord, tomorrow when we walk on campus, we're not going to talk the same. We're not going to act the same. We're not going to live the same. We're not even going to do work the same because we're going to raise the level because we've been with you tonight. Lord, we thank you that tonight hell lost over 100 but Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you protect them, that you keep them. That God is our youth pastors and pastors and FCA staff follow up. That God, discipleship moments would happen. Places and spaces of discipleship would happen. That God, the journey doesn't just end here, it starts here. Lord, this isn't the finish line, this is the starting line. Lord, I pray as we go our separate ways that you keep us safe, that you put your hand of protection over us as we travel back to our homes. Lord, on Friday nights as our teams and our different activities travel around the states of Arkansas and Texas, I pray that you protect us. Lord, you bring us back again next year right to this place, the same time and the same place. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we've never done this before. Last thing I'll tell you, we've never done this before, but next year the t-shirt color is going to be hot pink. We just want to let you know next year.
Hey, if you have a child that is missing, they are up by the bathroom, and one of our team members from CW Church has them, and they are up there. I believe her name is Christina, so you need to be up there. They're going to be that direction. Hey, Fields of Faith, what a year. You're dismissed. <laughs>